What's going on, guys? This is Eric Johnson. And I'm over you. And this is Bellator episode, I believe, 31. And all, we are on the road to 100 subscribers. Of course, we lost one somehow. Not sure how. Nonetheless. It was probably something, it was probably the, one of the many racist things you said last episode. Never. Never. Nonetheless. What the hell did I say? Uh, the many Korean accents. Oh. Oh. oh, if you're sensitive, fuck you. No, 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 Yes, people, we do not, we are not planning to be progressive at, in this YouTube channel. Never said we were. Anyway, we have Vanderlei Silva taking on Tyson Pedro in the main event. Alistair Overeem will, will fight Walt Harris. AJ McKee will defend his championship against Eric Koch. And Nate Diaz makes his belt for debut. Nate Diaz makes his debut fight. And we see two, uh, two more, the two more fights in the welterweight Grand Prix to decide the now, the now welterweight champion. That's right, Georgie Knight Kishigan will take on Funky Ben Askren. And apparently Funky should get his ass whooped. Like I mean, you can never really count out Ben Askren. Right, I think Ben Askren's going to definitely use some mummy guard and maybe some scarecrow defense. I don't know. I mean, you have to think that Kishigan might pull out the, air, the airplane. Yeah, he might have to use Hennon Burrell's, uh, uh, Burrell's made-up move, the airplane. Nonetheless, let's get this started here. We are in Japan for the show. That's why we have Vanderlei Silva and main eventing. And it looks like Zales Zalazow something some, something Polish beats Walter Gahadza. Gahadza the Honda. Walter the Honda loses by submission by with a rear naked choke in round three. In a great preliminary fight. And Walter Black Zalazowski Kachika Chika Chika Check wins this fight in his debut. And it will be Rob the Caveman Jackson taking on Marcus, also a caveman. <laughs> what the fuck do we do here? And we're going to Stone Age. We're going back to the Stone Age during this fight. And in this fight, we're going back to Caveman Ages. No rolls. No clothes, just cover your privates. And, that, and maybe we'll throw some rocks. We got some rocks in the cage, Mike. I got some rocks in the cage, Mike. Anyway, here we go. Let's skip to the end here. And Rob the Caveman Jackson defeats Marcus Caveman Vantanen. See, I, looks, I looks told like you, I told you the Caveman was going to win. Looks like the TKO to the strikes was due to was due to Marcus getting hit over the head repeatedly. What I should have asked back. everybody was, is the caveman gonna win or the caveman? I thought the caveman was gonna win, but I was wrong. I mean, you always got to bet on the caveman. I mean, I had my bet on the caveman. What about you? Uh, I had it on the caveman. That's what I thought. Nonetheless. <laughs> We now have a 2-1 and one fighter taking on a 1-0 and o fighter. This is going to be quite Wayman. Yep. Is his name Wayman? Yep. Wayman, yep. <laughs> I, I don't think you were catching what I was saying. I said, is his name Wayman? Yep. Yep. And we'll be taking on Terrell Bangu. He is African, but moved to Sweden. It's going to happen here. And, yep, yeah, told you he was going to win. Defeats Terrell by a knockout kick in the second round. I'd like to see that. I'll be right back. I'm going to get a to superb in. left kick. And he got straight out by it. Nice. I'm going to go get an energy drink so I can be prepared. Go ahead. He says that he's going to celebrate his win by heading to a local club for a victory party, and everyone is invited. 
And here we go. We have Abu Bakar Namagamadov's debut against Luis Gonzalez. And uh, Abu Bakar wins his debut by in the very first round with a TKO. He wants to fight whoever the fuck that guy is. Okay. He might get it. David Caveman. Another caveman. Holy shit. See, this is who I bet it on right here. This caveman. How many cavemen do we have on Bellator? We will never know. And that, I told you, see, that's the caveman I bet on right there. When, when you come back, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you to rewatch this. And that right there is the caveman that I bet on to win. And I was right. Referencing the scoring, he will, he is pissed that he did not get that unanimous decision. I, I have a feeling we're going to have to have a caveman climax or a caveman Grand Prix to, to decide who the true caveman is. Yes, as you see, see, I put my money on that caveman. That's who you really need a pitbull Grand Prix. Yes, we do. Seems like caveman's also another one. Hey, look, we got the battle of the mics. Patty Mike taking on the great white Mike. You know, we're just going to have to have a Grand Prix of names. Yeah, oh, who, who's the best Mike? <laughs> oh, you know what? A Pitbull Grand Prix? One of the Pitbull Grand Prix doesn't Hey, matter. Hey, Mike Goldberg, get your ass in there. Wait, what? I can't believe this, Joe. <laughs> and here we go. Michael Tobin defeats Patty Mike Pat Curran by a knockout punch. Good job, Michael Tobin. Now we have Gina Mazzani taking on Gabrielle Gabinator Holloway. Gina Mazzani defeats Gabrielle Holloway by submission. Good job, Gina. We have now Veronica Macedo taking on Anna Gelatin. And Gelatin wins by a TKO. Good stuff. We now have Sean Brady taking on side good. Is a good a good a good a minute 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 Mayev. Is a gak Mayev. Is a gak Mayev. Is a gak Mayev. Let me know how you think you pronounce that in the comments. I know it's side good or say good. Sure, I know that. Unless right, so we are now to the main show, and the winner moves on to the semifinals. In the welterweight Grand Prix 2021 tournament. And here we go. Nah, do it over. You know how to say it. Uh, Sai, is it gonna get a minute, 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 Maya? No, 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 no. The, and here we go. Huh. And here we go. There we go. I've got my bets on Saigon. He's been looking very impressive oh, I know. since his debut for Bellator. Oh, I know. He's undefeated. I think, I think we have a homegrown star here. He's, and he's also very young. Which also helps. We might have a homegrown star here in America. Up close, they start wrestling. Saigon says, I'm going to get that bitch. He gets caught with a couple of nice short punches. He's going to use some dirty boxing. So I get hits Brady with some short strikes. You know, when I think of the last name Brady, I think of greatness, thanks to football. So I get is trying to push Brady up against the cage. And Brady with Spygate and the Flake Gate takes control. And there's his brother Tom Brady in the front row cheering his brother on. That's right. Leaving Brady hopping and in danger of taking, getting taken down, and he got the leg. Nice leg trip there and to side control. Now you, now you have to be thinking for Tom Brady, Sean, Sean Brady's brother. You have to think just like his football career, it's all downhill for here, from here for his brother. That's right. Look at that. Very good records from both of these guys. Uh, Saga throws a few right hands to the body. Brady tries to transition to guard. Saga says, so I get throws a few strikes without venom. Listen to that pop from my energy drink can. That's right. 
Saigon fires off a few punches as he catches his breath. Brady tries to move guard. Saigon then does not allow it again. That's it for round number one. Very dominant round for Saigon. Absolutely. And this room, uh, that wasn't the most exciting round we've ever seen. And Saigon takes control of the round. And we are into round number two. And Brady gets a hold of him. Brady looking for the trip. And Saigon takes control of the grapple. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down the Sambo really comes in to help Saigon. Yeah, Sambo is kind of a very dominant, dominant, dominant fight style. It's basically the Floyd Mayweathers of uh, MMA. Which is why people like Fedor Emelianenko has such great careers. Yeah. So Fedor wanted to knock your... Hard shot to the foot, by the way. Where he takes that so, foot stop. So our new, so our new rules, uh, which now introduce stops and uh, soccer kicks to the to the body, I believe, are now take, being taken into effect. Well, foot stomps ain't that bad. It's when you get them in a clinch up against the cage and fucking you just stomp on their foot with your foot. It ain't that bad. You know, I thought like a foot stomp was like, you know what I mean, like a ghetto stomp. Not what I thought. Dan Mergoliata says, this is bullshit. Puts him back in the ring. This is bullshit. Basically. Brown. Says Dan Mergoliata. Brady sees the chance to grab Saigon in a clinch again. Sean Brady gets the, does not get the takedown, and Saigon... Again, yeah, I don't know, man. Sean Brady better stop him. Brady out-wrestles him. Oh. For another trip, and he... You got it. Hmm. Brady gets the trip. That's it. I'm not sure who won that one. Um, prob probably, I guess. Yeah, based on this, right? Two power strikes from the ground, too. Technically, no, he got nothing. He got no. He got. He got two knees. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, I think I might have dyslexia or something. Yep, they're saying so. I could definitely took that round. And it looks like Brady needs to finish him. I doubt it. He's got the chin of steel. Actually, his chin is made of so much steel, it probably hurts your hand to hit him. Can we actually take a look at his chin real quick? I'm pretty sure it's, like, amazing. Um, I don't know, actually. Oh, we're going to have to scout him after this. He is the arm bar master. All right, so. Yeah. No wonder why he's one with a couple arm bars, huh? Yeah, look at that arm bar right there. He's a submission guy. Anyway, so Brady, oh, looking for the takedown. Brady ends up backed against the cage. I don't know what Brady's going to have to do. Wait. Oh, wait. He turned it. He reversed it. Ooh. He's going to have to use some of his Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai here. It's Brady with the beauty of a straight right. Ah, okay. I see. And hits Brady with a straight right. Brady is oh. on the forehead. Large, large like gash. That's bad. And a Ric Flair who is in the front row is starting to get Vietnam flashbacks. I think he's having a hard on in the stands because that's the best bleed hard way ever. Woo! Looks like Ray Rick Flair's already taken a razor blade out and is cutting his forehead. His daughter Charlotte's trying to stop I him. I swear to God, every fucking Ric Flair match, like if you throw a pillow at him, he might bleed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> swear to God. Every Ric Flair match in the WWE, he bleeds. Charlotte kissed him out oh, of the way. Th throw a pillow, he might bleed. Bleeding. High five's an evolution member. Oh, fuck, he's bleeding. <laughs> God damn it. Sure, Charlotte kisses him on the forehead as she enters the ring, and then... God damn it, Charlotte, you busted him open. All I did was kiss him on the head. 
man. Exactly. He's fragile. <laughs> Fuck it. God damn it. <laughs> Don't you understand anything that and when anything happens, he goes into a crimson mask? I mean, look, it's no, a mistake. No, Rick, He's bleeding Rick, again. Rick, here, here. Rick kisses Charlotte on the, on the cheek and he gets Alistair overreamed. Yeah. Or his, like, top lift got rip ripped off or something. Nothing's happening. Oh, yeah, there's a fight going on. Brady fails to find a home for his jab, and Ric Flair gets busted open just for the excitement. <laughs> I'm not, by, the way, uh, by the way, people, this might be a little much for me because I forgot to take my med my medication to help you pay, pay attention today. That's okay. You can take your riddle in another day. Yes. I don't know. I just made an assumption. <laughs> uh, it's by Vance. High roundhouse kick. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, no. Shit. But and a right head kick again from God. Brady Lance. It's all over. Sean Brady wins by knockout. What the fuck is that? You just had to wait, you just had to wait 11 more seconds. Not yet. God, no. And so much for good becoming a superstar. Fire him. He is useless now. Uh. He's still going to be here. I, I can't believe it. Maybe Sean Brady's the future. Maybe. Maybe. Praises him for a tough fight. Wow, Sean Brady goes to the semifinals. Oh, man. That's... Uh, where, he will, where he will face the winner of this next fight. He might. And it is Georgie Kishigan taking on the funky one, Ben Askren. The first, ben Askren, first no, underdog who won tonight. We're going to see if ben apparently he's the underdog. Ben Askren, probably not going to touch gloves. Because he's an asshole. Referee, the referee is Mario Yamasa. Jesus. And here we go. Askren says, fuck off. I don't even know you, and I don't give a shit about you. Called it. Michigan wrestles his way into a dominant position. He's going to push Askren against the cage, and he's going for a double leg takedown, and he got it. Now, you have to think that this might actually be the best thing for Ben Askren. If he can wind up in a dominant position with his wrestling skills and BJJ from his countless years of experience. This could this could backfire horribly for a And Askren's ready in a scramble. And Kishigan ends up in guard still. Didn't even go anywhere. And now we're in half guard. Kishigan is dominant in the half guard position. Kishigan blocks the sweep attempt. Kishigan wants to get out of half guard. And Askren allows the pass for a scramble. And Kishigan just ends up back in half guard. Wow. Kishigan throws a few right hands as he takes a moment ahead. Askren uses the underhook to work some separation and then he quickly scrambles. Wasn't enough separation. Kishigan catched him and he caught him and he got him inside control. And it's looking like it's going to be it here. Nothing else really exciting. And uh, Kishigan definitely just owned Ben Askren. Yeah, I would say. Sorry, I'm rubbing my eyes a minute, so I put the timer on. Two players come together, start with the clinch, and start wrestling. Kishigan in down in position. He's going to look to take him down yet again. And Askren again. cannot <laughs> stop the takedown again. Kishigan goes for the Kimura. Askren stops him. Askren's going to have to figure out, what the fuck am I going to do here? You know, Askren fights off the Kimura. Kishigan's saying, I'm just going to finish this fucking white boy off. I'm done with this motherfucker. From Yadagorsk, Russia. Kishigan 
Michigan attempts to... Let me guess. He gets the takedown. Yep. yep. Asker just cannot do anything against this guy. Maybe that... Maybe his age is starting to catch up to him. Yeah, maybe he's, maybe he's 36. Maybe Michigan is just a better wrestler. Yeah, I think Kishik is a better wrestler, unfortunately. I can't John so, Brady went to the uh went to the semifinal. Is he gonna be able to make the final? Oh, did probably should take it out of the timer. That's okay. Alright. Michigan goes low, holding a single leg, and that's a single leg takedown. But Ashkin, no, scramble. Michigan ends up having a what? Askren gets the top advantage. Now, this is where, this is do or die time for Ben Askren. If I were him, I'd throw out any submission possible. It's looking like no. He's trying to knock him out. I don't understand. Askren. And then, oh, wait. Scramble begins. Kishigan's turtled. Wait a minute. Askren pounds away. Does not uh, damage. And that's it. Dang. Imagine if Askren knocked him out in the last second. That is definitely a 10-9 Askren round. Let's see what these judges say. Oh, wait a minute. Wait, wait. Oh, boy. Or a draw. I don't know, man. Who's the score? 29-28. What happens if there's a draw? 29-28 Askren. And the winner by split decision is Michigan. Okay, I was about to say, don't tell me he's going to get fucked. <laughs> okay. Imagine if there was a draw. I don't know how he would do that. Would would, uh, the, uh, would uh, Sean just go pass or something or a bye round? Askren has retired. I was about to say, please, please do not win and then retire. Then we have to find a new guy or give the other guy a bye right into the final. That would have sucked. It would have sucked. He wants Paul Daly. Well, guess what? You might get him. If Paul Daly wins. If. Just, that's a big if. Stephen Thompson is a tough opponent. Yep. And here we go with uh, with the Prince Amir Al-Bazi picking on Mob Sar something, something, something. Both of these guys are undefeated. One of them has to lose tonight. I th we got Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu versus Sambo. That's right. And I'm pretty sure Sambo is like the best art of fighting right now. Evlov dodges a right hand counter to attack. There you go. I cannot talk today. Evlov comes forward walking down on Bazi. Oh, Bazi hits two lefts on the counter. Evlov lands on the left hand and hits a nice straight right that lands hard. There you go. Ooh. Let me take a look at this man real quick. He is a rear naked choke master. Avalov obviously is a heavy favorite in this fight, but 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 Saigad was the heavy favorite in the last fight, and he ended up losing. So let's see what happens. Avalov yes. throws a two punch combo, and Albazi avoids both. Albazi counters a right hand with a left jab and a right cross that just missed. Albazi hits a jab and a right hand got taken on the gloves. Evlov hits a two-punch combo. Quick left, straight right. Evlov comes forward on the attack. Albazi fires off the counter jab. Evlov attacks with a right head kick. Albazi immediately backs away and covers up. He got rocked. And a vicious right uppercut from Evlov, and down he goes. And there's two or three heavy shots. And then Evlov goes for the Kimura. This is where he might go after a rear naked choke soon. An arm bar. Albazi stops the arm bar. If I were Evlop, I would, I would capitalize while Al... Uh, oh, well, is, it, is it over? That is the end of the first round, yes. If I were Albazi, I would have capitalized on... If, if, if I was Evlop, I would have capitalized on Albazi being stunned and taken his back and gotten a rear naked choke. 
Yeah, he could have. Have love. There we go. The Albazi misses the right cross, which then attacks with a sequence of quick jabs, followed by a big right hand and missed up. Now, Albazi was getting hurt constantly at the end of that round. You have to think that he still, he still might be a little shaken up coming into the second round. Yeah. There we go. Albazi's moving in and out of range. And that might have... Crunch, crunching right hook. That might have costed him his chin. <laughs> Great right hook from Evlov. Yeah, this is not looking good for Albazi, huh? He might witness his first loss. Trading back and forth now. Oh, oh wow, he's grimacing at the clock. I don't know why I'm. Obviously, these shots from Evlab is hurting him significantly. Yeah, he's in pain. He's wondering when the hell this fight's over. A very exciting fight, and the crowd is letting us know. Oh, man. I don't know where the hell this fatigue came from. Oh, oh man. Let's see. Evlov's breathing heavy. This could be an advantage for Albazi to come in there. I think it definitely could. Okay, his corner just noticed that. I, as I said, I just it, it said that he's starting to get tired. I think his corner just acknowledged that and told Albazi. So. Perhaps if I were Albazi, I'd start. I would just start throwing body kicks to, to wear. Oh, out. There's a great right hook there by Evlov, and Albazi misses a punch that leaves him open, and a powerful straight right from Evlov, and Albazi falls. Yep. And wow, Albazi dealt with all the punches. Amora by Evlov. Albazi, yeah, yeah, I don't know how Albazi's going to get out of this one. Yeah, it's not looking good. Albazi fights off the arm triangle. Americana. We're switching it up, but no. He man. is trying all arm submissions, and that's it. Uh, it looks like you're winner by unanimous decision. Yep. It's going to be Evlov. He's 12-0, and 0, and that's his first loss right there. Who knows? Maybe this guy is going to be a breakout star. Well, he praises Amir Albazian for his toughness. And now it is Nate Diaz's debut here in Bellator. 19 and with the overwhelming favorite. Just have to see. Wow, Nate Diaz is 36. Yep. He looks rough, don't he? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice left hand for Diaz. Hey, can can we take a look at Diaz's chin real quick? I'm sure it's still good, right? Uh, not as strong as it should be. He's never got knocked out, but that does not mean it won't happen. He's never been, he's been finished before, but never cleanly, but never actually knocked out, but it could still happen. Who knows? Maybe tonight's going to be the night. A tentative left jab from from Patrick. So you have to think that he is definitely afraid of Nate Diaz's 
Holmes and BJJ skills. Jab hits home from uh, Diaz and he catches Iadis with a right hook. Take down ten from Iadis and Diaz cannot stop the takedown. I don't. I don't know if that was. Wait a minute, Diaz really got the guillotine. Yeah. Diaz I mean, gets the guillotine sunk in. I mean, that's a rookie mis That's a rookie level mistake from Patrick Iadis. That that's with somebody with a skill level of Nate Diaz on the ground and with his Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, that was a. Dude, that was just a colossal mistake. I believe he's also a black belt, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. Yeah. He's a BJJ black belt. They know what to do when they're taken down. And he celebrates his Bell Tour debut with a win. So congratulations to Nate Diaz. Now we have the yeah, big ticket the going up against the Demolition Man. Now here's a co-main. That's right. Now Alistair Overeem obviously made a huge... No, 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 no. The co-main is the lightweight title. Oh, yeah. Well, Alistair Overeem obviously made a huge name over here for himself in Japan when he used to fight for pride. Yep. Overeem is off target with a left jab. Hits a kick to the lead leg. Harris nails the right cross. Harris misses with a big right hand like Overeem to counter the left jab quick kick combo. Allowing uh, Harris to counter the powerful straight right that landed cleanly. And Overeem got knocked down. Oh, Walt Harris could win his debut fight. And he tries to pound on Overeem. None of the blows land to the degree of power. Harris is on top now. Or sure, Overeem is? No, Harris is. Mm. Harris almost got the TKO victory. Scramble. Overeem mistakenly leaves his back exposed, and Harris seizes the chance to take it. As Harris gets the rear naked choke, Overeem defended himself. You have to think those big arms must have helped Overeem defend that rear naked choke. Yeah. And another rear naked choke with both hooks in. Overeem defended it well. And that's going to be it for round number one. Looks like Walt Harris had control. Walt Harris is going to be using those bricks for hands, remember. As you can see, he's a head hunter. But you know he's looking for the KO. Uh, Alistair Overeem, he loves to strike, so... And he has a weak chin. He does, doesn't he? Mm-hmm. Oh, Overeem my God. loves to strike, but he, I don't think he should at this stage with that weak chin. Yeah. One powerful punch just makes him fall to the ground, huh? Let's not forget that Walt Harris is a heavy underdog, and he completely controlled Overeem in that round because of his weak chin. And here we go for the start of round number two. Harris is already tired, probably from using all of his power that first round. Try to get the early win. You think these fat fucks can go that long? Hell no. Harris scores two counter jabs. Overeem hits a left jab and a nice straight right that lands hard. Ooh. And wait a minute. Overeem attacks with a vicious right cross. And that's a knockout by Alistair Overeem. Alistair Overeem returning to Japan with a vengeance and coming back with a vengeance in a second round, knocking Walt Harris out cold. Unbelievable. Just killed Walt Harris with a right cross. He wants Matt. Oh, him and Matt Matrone. That'd be pretty cool. I think Matt. Two old guys. Tire after. Uh... And now, Jay coming back with Silent Bob in his corner. Silent Bob smoking weed. Jay looking to try and try not to get caught. Uh, try, looking to try not to get weed. Hey, the athletic smoke. commission does not care if you smoke weed as long as you're not booked for a fight. Okay. <laughs> The Athletic Commission is looking very suspiciously at Jay as he makes his entrance. 
Yeah, we can, they can definitely smell the weed on him. He claims it is only secondhand smoke. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. And here's Matt Riddle following shortly behind Silent Bob. Looks like they're both sharing heavy doobies. <laughs> Remember, Matt Riddle is scheduled for a fight. He better be careful there, RBM. I mean, it wouldn't be the first time Matt Riddle got a no contest due to oh, due to massive weed. Maybe he has f- four of them. Koch manages the counter jab. Koch buys the feint. McKee throws a two-punch combo, and Koch says, hell no. And Koch misses a left hook. It's counter the jab, right cross combo. McKee comes forward. See what's going to happen. Remember, man, we had a couple underdogs come up out of nowhere. Koch fires off the counter jab. He connects with a jab. His big right hand follow up misses. McKee can't pa- cannot get past the good guard of Koch. Two punches were absorbed. Oh, wow. Both these fighters are even. Koch lands a quick punch and then scores with a quick kick to the lead leg. McKee is off target with a left jab and hits a good right hand. Koch lands a right hand. McKee lands a jab, lands a low kick to the leg. Misses the jab, hits the left cross. McKee hits a left jab, also nails a right cross. Koch is just getting walked down by AJ McKee. Jab hits home for McKee and scores with a leg kick. Koch hits a right jab, does not get the leg kick. So Koch is a southpaw. That's what I noticed. McKee's, uh, they're just saying, knock this fucker out already. And he gives a nod, and he goes right back into it. His senses are down from all the marijuana. <laughs> McKee has a right hand taken on the gloves. Koch does not find the mark with his left. Oh. Maybe that's why Koch is, is missing all these shots. He's already high on the secondhand smoke from the marijuana. Could happen. Most people expect McKee to go on and win this fight now after the way the first round has gone his way. It's hard to see a scenario where Koch can do enough to take this fight. There's the second round. I thought Koch did okay. Yeah, I mean, you could hit a lucky right hook. McKee's just too fast. Okay, again. Oh, my God. Oh, Jesus. Koch oh, no. Last. There you go. Koch oh. the right hand counterattacks with a left cross. There you go. And McKee gets that vicious right cross. And Koch got knocked down. And that is it. AJ McKee's first title defense. McKee got hit with that left cross. He said, oh, yeah, motherfucker. And just fucking finished him. Out of nowhere. AJ McKee makes his first defense. Remember, they say you're still not the champ until you make your first defense. You want it, but can you defend it? That's what everyone says. And he, and he has. Yep, so now but he can claim to be a champion. Now probably his number one challenger is coming up behind him, and his name is Juan Archuleta. Yeah. It's, gonna, it's looking to be... No, Juan Archuleta is for Duho Choi. Oh, yeah, that's right. I mean, it could be Juan Archuleta. And here is the main event we've been looking for. It is Vanderlei Silva taking on Tyson Pedro. And here we go. Yep, here we go. Pedro hits the right jab and does not find the mark with the left hook. Silva uses a left jab. Can not get that kick to the body? Silva misses the right hook and leaves himself open to be countered with a good left hand. You take a look at... Uh... His chin is not that great. 
better than Alice or Overeem's, definitely. Definitely got knocked out in the second round last fight, though. Yep. Silva scores with a jab, also connects cleanly with a right hand. And Pedro almost falls. He almost falls. Vanderlei Silva almost got the knockout there first round. Almost. Would you fucking get away from this guy? If I were Tyson Pedro, who is obviously a lot younger than than Vanderlei Silva, I assume it's not sure. I have to wear. I just try to wear Silva down and keep away from Silva's power. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to use wrestling on Vanderlei Silva though. Maybe not. Maybe not in the sense of wrestling, but maybe like occasional kicks to the body. Yeah. Good. I see what Tyson Pedro could use. I really don't know, but he's got accomplished karate and jujitsu. There you go. Now, so you notice how Silva went for a head kick attempt. At his advanced age of 44, that's going to wear him down fast. <laughs> that was a good effort. Through. Very exciting round. And they're still going to give it to Vanderlei. Yeah. But by Vanderlei, I'd stay away from those from trying to do those head kicks. Because that's just going to wear him down fast. See, Pedro dodges a right hand and counterattacks with a clean left. Pedro misses with the low kick. Glancing blow with a high kick there from Pedro. Right hand from Pedro. And so a powerful right head kick. Pedro gets knocked down. And it's looking like that's going to be it. Yes, it is. Vanderlei Silva takes the victory by way of TKO. And what could be his last fight. Yep. And what a fitting end to Vanderlei Silva's career, which started off in Japan and ends in Japan. That is absolutely right. How fitting, huh? Yep. Tyson Pedro decided to take the fall. I knew he would take my money payment. You know, I see. I, I notice how we make we do great at critical ratings, but then not so great at at the commercial ratings. We had a ninety-one percent last show. Yep. God damn it. Yep. We have, uh, now that we're a low-level international, we have a hell of a lot higher expectations. Yeah. Which is fan-fucking-tastic, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, we did have some great, uh, we did have a great crit critical rating because of these Great fights. We actually lost six hundred and two grand. So. I mean, we, we, well, we're we're still plenty in the positive, so nothing to worry about yet. I'm hoping we don't fall in size. That would. That, that you know what, man? That 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 talk dude was right, man. That is just higher expectations every show. Hopefully, with all these future main events books, we're hoping they keep us afloat or advance us. 
We hope. Hopefully. Let me know when it's done. I'm gonna get me some Pepsi. No, this is not okay. a okay. This is not a so sponsorship. People. I'm just thirsty for a Pepsi. Alright, people. You are alone with RBM. Don't you don't need to call the police. I'm not gonna harm you. But hello, one. What? What was that? I said hello, my one. <laughs> no 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 no. Don't need to call the nine one one yet. Not, not yet, not yet. I haven't touched them, I swear. Uh, and RBM just pulled his pants down. Come on, I'm just joking. Uh, okay, hey, 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 hey. Don't need to get so, don't need to go, get so excited. I'm calling the police. Oh, uh, please don't. One, what's your emergency? Yes, I cannot believe it, man. This guy's just fucking flashing himself on his camera on Omega. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, there's another one! Hey, he did the same thing! Yeah, what you gonna do? You're in Pittsburgh. I'm in South Dakota. Oh, what? Baby. And who went what you to jail do? in 2015 for exporting UFC president is now suing White for breach of contract. Hmm. So there's some interesting MMA news. Dana White was a victim of extortion back in 2015. wonder what that's about. Dude. Basically, let's say Dana White just gave me like $10 million to do something. I didn't do it. That's considered extortion. Hmm. Like, let's say I just signed a five-year contract to fight for UFC. I, I, decided to not, I decided to not take one fight. And that whole entire contract, I don't take one fight. Huh. That's extortion. Dana White responded Saturday to a civil lawsuit filed against him by a man who went to prison for extortion, calling it bullshit suit that he expected to be quickly dismissed. Well, in other news, uh, Dominic Reyes has said that the UFC was in talks of... Uh scheduling a rematch between him and John Jones before this whole pandemic. Who's having a rematch? Well, down at Reyes and John was in talks with the UFC about having a rematch with John Jones before this whole pandemic went down. And that uh, John Jones finally gets arrested? Uh, you know, but Tiago Santos is calling out Dominic Reyes for an interim title match. Which... Can't blame them. Yeah, could be a could be a pretty nice interim title match, actually. Mm -hmm. These awesome rankings. Some Rama moves all the way back up into the top ten for sure, now. Oh my God! How did Walt Harris? So Floyd made what Mayweather's daughter got arrested for allegedly stabbing some that stabbing an NBA. Uh, uh, players of mom, mom or something. Yeah, yeah. Let's see, like heavyweight. The fuck is this? Oh, Tyree Fortune but now moves up. Interesting. Tyson Pedro goes down to 11. Mauricio Shogun Hua. Hey, Andrew Clamp. Oh, did anything happen? Did anything happen? Ooh, he went up. And look at our brand new signing. Tyron Woodley, we signed it to a 10-year contract, even though he's almost 40. Tyron Woodley is now in Bellator MMA, guys. And he will be a middleweight. And he's got a plus five momentum. So we're going to hopefully book him up against Lovato Jr. Love to see that. Mm-hmm. And Stephen Thompson is now ready to be booked against, I believe, Paul Daly. Paul Daly. Yep. That's what it looks to be. 
Sean. And Matt Riddle is, is now in the rankings. Sean Brady and Kishigan now moved up. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also wanted to ask you guys, what do we do with McDonald since he's on hiatus? Do we fire him? Yeah, should we fire McDonald? Should we keep him signed? What What should we do? As I mean, he's on hiatus, which fucking sucks. He could be out for no. Fuck. He could be on a hiatus for the next five years. We have no idea. He could be on hiatus for the next ten years, or he could be coming back tomorrow. Yeah, we never know with this fucking guy, huh? Um. So after his fucking win against Michael Venom Page, he decided to say, "Hey guys, fuck off. I'll be back." In another lifetime. Um, however, it doesn't mean he's retired, though, so... just want to know what you guys think we should do. I mean, we've already stripped him of the welterweight title, so... Let's see, Nate, da- Nate, Nate Diaz moves up. You were about to say Diaz, weren't you? Maybe. Eric Kochwins goes down, down, and down again. Oh, when's Nate Diaz recovered? I'm gonna be recovered. I don't know. Oh, here we go. Korean Superboy is going to be recuperating in about a week. So we- oh, you mean it's Korean Scooby-Doo Ho Choi? Korean Scooby-Doo Ho Choi is going to be fighting Juan Archuleta next. Maybe this time they can get their fucking fight in. And looks like uh, we can get that Megan Anderson Raquel Pennington fight. So let's get that underwear. Not them in underwear, but I mean, with you, with the countless sexual harassment lawsuits we have filed against you so far, just from our women's fighters, yeah. wouldn't be surprised. That's why I said not. Hopefully. I mean, even managed to make Chris Cyborg upset, and that's because she wasn't included. I know. I, I She's a one. greatly, greatly apologized since then. There we go. We made that for September. And we need some straw weight fights. The straw weight division will not kick off until November in this game, so that's what we're going to try to do. Okay. We're already kind of, well, you know what? We can throw together some uh, women's straw weight fights here. There we go. Uh, no, that's right. We're doing a tournament, right? Uh, aren't we, weren't we going to do a Grand Prix or something? New tournament. Women's straw weight. I think we're going to do, okay, I guess we can do eight fighters. Yep. Women's straw weight. Division. Women's straw weight tournament for the championship. For the champion. Okay. How about for the title? There. Okay. Um, these are all of our straw weights now. Okay, Cynthia will take on. Oh, we could probably. Oh, she's injured. Yeah, we're just gonna do eight. Okay, so Brianna Van Buren takes on Cynthia Calvillo. We're just gonna do it by. How long? How long's Calvillo out for? I don't know. We'll walk here in a minute. I believe she is out for only another 37 days. Okay. With uh, what injury? I have no clue. Uh, hand injury. Now we have Pollyanna Viana Moda taking on Alexandra Tonecho. I don't even remember what the hell their names are. Pollyanna, Viana, uh-huh. and, uh, yeah. 
Pollyanna, and then uh, da 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 Alexandra. Okay. Next one's gonna be three and six. Sheena Van Hoos. Van Hoos. You know, if we had one, if we had one more strawweight fighter, we could do a do one with the entire roster. Yeah. We could. That's okay. We're gonna do eight because eight's simpler. All right. All right. Let's see. Albu and Shio. Shino, right? Van Hoots. Mm -hmm. And four and five is Nina Ansaroff and Satomi Takano. And that's our Strawweight Grand Prix to decide that the first ever Strawweight Women's Champion. Now, speaking of Grand Prix, yeah. we should probably book the past Okay, it's Georgie Kishigan and Sean Brady. We are now waiting on the winner of, I believe, yeah, okay. So, Paul Pollack and Doug Lima. And Thompson and Daly. So, now let's find an event to put Thompson and Daly on. So, I just want to get this fucking card over with. Maybe we could add it here. Not this card, but I just want to get this fucking fight. This is it, right? Yep. Okay, that. Steven Thompson, the favorite. That's fine. You can. I'll pay you. I'll pay you a ton. We'll pay you. Money. There we go. So we can get those fights out of the way next month in August. And then finally be able to get the semifinals done, either here or there. Or a may Maybe the finals will be done in this game by January, February. Maybe. Maybe not. With Steven Th if Stephen Thompson beats Paul Daly. That long recovery will probably make it uh, probably mid to late. Mid to God damn, early, man. Mid, uh, Hold on. What kind of fight is this? A decent main event? Be a potential main event. That was a fucking great main event. So maybe, hmm, maybe we should put the Stephen Thompson Paul Bailey higher up on the card. Absolutely. We had a couple of inducements. I had to pay Ryan Bader to fight Vadim Nemkov. Just to fucking have Nemkov fight for the title. Cannot wait to see that fight. All right, here we go. Add show. Bellator 243 is going to be official. What the fuck is going on here? Why are we... I think we're still... I think we're still waiting on uh, renegotiations. I'm just going to hit extend for every single one of these. What? Ah. Extend. Well, fuck you then. Fuck you then. And I guess we are going to. You want to make our second showcase card instead? Um, yeah. Could. We want to make a. Semi Maybe somewhere in here. Let's see, hold on. That's July week three. Okay, we August week three. Oh, wait. Showcase, episode two. You son of a bitch. Oh, tell your showcase ESPN or something. And remember to have this be a throwaway show. That's what. Yeah. 
Be a low level national. Oh, fuck it, eh? Yeah, we got higher expectations, guys. Whoa, look what we got now a publicity blitz. Yo, maybe we should go through all these, uh, all the cards then and just. A publicity them. blitz costs you 40000 a month. Social media campaigns and billboards and key locations. Dude, we gotta do, we gotta do something. Let me stuff. see this one. Okay. An advanced publicity blitz. Ooh. Now that we're a international company, we can give uh, tons of publicity. I think the one with the... This one. Yeah, I think this one. This one advanced one publicity blitz. Save. I want to see that. I definitely want to try to get Heather Hardy and Juliana guys over all right I was just do a regular publicity blitz for that we're gonna use viral social media campaigns and billboard billboards and key locations hashtag, hashtag uh, women's rights hashtag women's movement hashtag yeah. women's power. everything progressive whoops Hawaii has an 80%. Hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, we had a show in Hawaii. Um, yeah, that's probably what boosted it up. It's good. Montana. No, I'm fine. Uh, we never go to North Dakota. Never go to North Dakota. <laughs> the, the worst Dakota. The only That's thing they have running for them is a good, it was a good movie that was based on lies and a semi-good TV show. Yeah. Well, for my hate, the eastern half of Pennsylvania, and that eastern half happens to be Philadelphia. Fuck them. Let's go to, let's go to Alabama. Last time we were here was in 2015, so we're here we make our return. It's been a good six years, Alabama, Bama, 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 Bama. Overeem would already be available to be booked. Volkov can defend his title against Menikov. The rematch, again, for like the 80th fucking time in a row. Uh, Tyrone Woodley would be there. Tyrone right? Woodley would be able to start, yep. Walter Waite, Michael Page can be a quick camp fighter. Um, he's a way on hiatus. AJ McKee would already be available. Uh, Scooby Doo is available. Yes, Scooby Doo. Doo Choi, Juan Archuleta. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not what it thinks. She would still be serving her medical suspension. Mm. Oh, shit, don't I have her in that tournament? I don't remember. And we need to get all these flyweights booked. Yeah, I think we have a good enough card. To try and set up. Let's do a publicity blitz. For everything. Vol Except for the you know big... What? We're big doing Volkov stuff. and Travis Brown. Yeah, that's. I think that's what our plan was. Yep, that's what we're doing. Volkov and Travis Brown. Maybe do Ho Choi and... Uh, I don't think Travis Brown was that popular. Look at that. Look at that. He, he needs one more good win to be an international guy. Maybe, this, maybe if we hype him up, we can get him to that, that international level. Like everywhere, right? Let's see. 
Um, like heavyweight doesn't really have anything good. Sorry. There we go. Michael Page and Carlos Condit. Yeah, that could be a nice way for Michael Venom and Page to bounce back. They've never fought before. Yeah. It's just, oh wait, Kevin Ferguson. Hmm. I want to give him somebody good up the card. Him and Chiesa. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the favorite in that, too. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, no, no, no. Michael Chiesa it is. Yeah, yeah, Michael Chiesa it is. And then maybe MVP versus Carlos Condit. There we go. We're going to give Kevin Ferguson his first main card fight. I feel like we're ready to give him that. What about Chandler who just beat everyone's ass, huh? Oh, we could give Michael uh, Michael Venom Page and Carlos Condit their fight. <laughs> okay, here we go. By popularity. Still wouldn't fight him, huh? Oh, wait. Wait, he, he, he would fight him? So hold on a second. Can we do that fight then now? Like, please, just, 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 just do it. Motherfucker. Hey, if a certain somebody bites on the contract. So you have to be a high-level regional, huh? Mm. Oh, I know what it is. It's this fucking thing right here. It's low-level national size. Okay, fine. Just to get a goddamn title defense, please take it. You know, at this point, we, we might need to make an interim title because this guy is not willing to play ball. He does not want to play ball, unfortunately. And that sucks. I really like him playing ball. Oh, not that kind of ball, huh? I like him playing with my balls. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, this is a family show, okay? Clean. And... Cut back to you making offensive uh, Korean accents. I know. I think I care if someone's feelings get hurt. <laughs> wasn't there that flyweight title? Wasn't there that women's title fight that could be made now? For the flyweight? No, not flyweight. No, I already did that, remember? Oh, uh, yeah. Let's do Bruna Ellen and... Look, my MVP versus Carlos Condit. I thought I already made that. No, you didn't. You just went right to uh, Baby Slice. Oh. Uh, forgot. Let me see Michael Page. This would be a main show fight, not a main event. This would be... Best to to the prelims. My ass. You're getting up there. Yeah, maybe if he wins on the fucking main card. You know what? I'm calling it. That's our code name. If 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 Kevin Bergson wins the title, that would be the end of the series. We actually built a star. I don't want to see where we run with it. I just, I just don't want to end it prematurely, you know? I know. I'm just making a joke. I was about to say. I just can't end the series. I, I'm interested. I have to see where that goes, you know? Um. By the way, has the bird wrestling ever gone all the way through with a series? I don't think uh, yeah, this is our furthest one. Trying to see what else we could do. Uh, Belong and Wu. Wu and Shrove. Maybe. Um, Wu and Rama. Or Wu and Bobsky. Ooh. How about Rama and Shrove? I think of something for a younger guy, but yeah. I see where you're coming from. Yeah, give him the guy with dead momentum. I'm looking for hot momentum. 
the moment. Ooh, there you go, Moldovsky and Rama. It's a close fight. Yeah. What about Wu and Rama? Pretty close fight. There's your guy. Hmm. I say Valentin Moldovsky and uh, and Rama. All right, sure. Rank right, is Stefan Struvet. Ooh, six. What about Moldovsky and Struve? Close fight. Favali. Oh. What would be a good fight? Well, what do you want to see? Out of these uh, okay. top five currently we have right here. I'd say probably Rama and and Wu. Rama and Wu. Actually, what was Moldowski doing? Was he wrestling or knocking people out? Let's see, he defeated James Mulherin by submission in May. Hmm. I'd probably say Wu and Rama. Defeated Frank Mir by unanimous decision. And he beat Arlovsky with a fucking TKO. And Arlovsky was the favorite in that fight, too? Yeah. Here's what happened in that fight. Rama, you know, he's spiraling out of control after he lost the title. And he just went, you know what? I'm tired of people sleeping on me. They've been sleeping on me ever since I've lost the title, even before I even made my first defense of the title. Uh, and now they're sleeping on me here. So I'm going to take take it and take this into my own hands and knock Darlovsky out. Yeah, that happened. There we go. First round there. Basically, the, this prelim is going to be all straw white women, two and seven. Maybe we should put those on like our uh, our new card. Or the and three two. and six. Hold on. Oh, oops. <laughs> and three and six. Fuck you. A lot of these checks ain't gonna be ready, that's why. Having all these. Oh, did we not go through with our ESPN episode two showcase? Not yet. Uh -uh. Well, we need prelims here. That's why I can't think of anything else. <sighs> Should we do for prelims? Just watch Moldovsky just tear somebody a loon limb. Did he and Favlo, did he and, uh, Favlo? Did he, did Moldovsky and Favalli face yet? No, but looks like Moldovsky's going to kill him. Hey, we want to see somebody, we want to see him tear somebody up, so why not him? Sure. I was like, don't tell me I forgot to make a fucking prelim. Okay. Now, I'm going to start doing a 10-fight prelim just to get people a fucking chance. Yep. Apparently, this Nem Nemkov guy is kind of decent. And he is. Holy shit. There we go. This looks like a good-ass fucking prelim fight. Oh, no. Not my sweet baby brown bear. I know. That's okay. Give him a shot against a Russian. Uh, Don't worry. Don't worry. We'll, we'll, if he gets beaten bad, we'll just... Oh, yeah, Uriah Hall. Maybe Shemeika? That looks like a good fight. It's gonna be. Okay, we need to do lesser weight classes. Kind of like down... Like Phantom 
Oh my god, this Kakaru Fuma. Look at this. Oh, Caldwell still rocks him. Man, I can't believe he won't take this fucking fight. You know what we should do? So, are we going to strip uh, Dominic Cruz of the title because he's not going to... No gonna wonder win. why he won't face fucking Caldwell. Look at this. He beat him twice. He beat him in fucking by unanimous decision. You think he'd take on Fuma? I don't think he's popular enough. Nope. Imagine. You got. Dear God. <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. He actually, actually. So he, so he just hates Caldwell. Okay. So it's not. So it's not that he's. I don't wanna. And you'll face Fuma. Yep, I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll do it. Absolutely. What the fuck? Um. You know what? Maybe the old main event our uh, our our uh, yeah, uh, showcase card. Yeah, sure. That's fucking bullshit. But okay. He's like, I'm tired Whoa. of laughing. Where's, where's the August shit? Oh, there it is. I was about to say. My God. All right. Cruz is like, I'm tired of slapping up Caldwell. Give me, give me that food, my kid. Give me this motherfucker. Uh, women's straw weight. I believe five and six. Six ain't available. And we're waiting. I'm gonna get some of these straw white women in. A couple of cods. Why are they all unranked? Fuck. Lily Beeman. I'm sorry, who the hell's the main favorite? My god. A lot of these women would just fucking beat the shit out of each other. The greatest episode ever. Not because of anything content wise, but because Dominic Cruz is like, no, I don't want Caldwell. Although, I'll take that food, kid. Who? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our number two contender. I thought you only face famous people, buddy. No, I'm just tired. No, 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 no. You got me all wrong. I'm just tired of slapping them up. Uh -huh. I want a new flavor. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're Dominic Cruz, not Kobe Covington. Yeah, that sounded a little wrong there, buddy. Whoa, Donald Cerrone. Oh, yeah, we moved him up. Mm -hmm. Now a middleweight fighter. And we are going to put him down to the... He might actually be... Okay. We're going to have him Andrew Sanchez on the prelim on this card. Fuck. Oh, my God. Jesus Christ. Hey, popularity. Fine, you get Logan Paul. You happy with that? Are you happy with that? Or you can get KSI. No, oh, Jesus. I mean, I'm trying to get you somebody who's ranked, okay? I mean, if, if you don't want the ranked guy, uh, I mean, that's fine by me. Uh, I don't get it. Might have to be Uriah Hall or Joe Schilling. You get Logan Paul. <laughs> Just whoop his fucking ass, please. I would love that so much. I fucking hate Logan Paul. You know what? Donald Cerrone didn't want to come up here to just to try to get a career rebound. He just wanted to slap up some YouTubers. I think YouTubers are little bitches. That's why. <laughs> I'm, fucking... <laughs> I'm tired of these. Th I'm tired of all the, these corny ass vlogs. I'm a goddamn cowboy. Amen. There's some heavyweight fucking prelims in. I don't even care if they own them or not. 
Oh, is Dom Cerrone on the prelims? No idea. Oh, yeah. I put him on the prelims. I fucking... Uh, what's it called? What, what did I say I was doing to him? Kind of, uh, we lost a little... Saying that we lost faith in him and he has to win again. To get on yeah, he has to, he has to make me believe he can come back. Yeah, I just don't give this opportunity to nobody, all right? Because if Don Cerrone loses again... Not like if he if he wins and then loses, uh, then he'll get one more chance. But if he loses this fight, he's oh, he's done. That's what it's looking like, huh? Yeah. His fucking right. My God. Forgetting about our other women's fucking divisions. Sorry. There we go. I swear to God, I'm about to like fucking fuck you, Dominic Cruz. I'm like so fucking mad at him, dude. <laughs> fuck him. <laughs> Jesus, man, he's a fucking dick. He's an asshole. I've never dealt with somebody like that before, man. I wonder how. Dana Whitefields, my god. I don't want to fight him. Bull bitch, he's a number one contender. Uh, he's not famous enough. I killed him twice already. That's what, well, well, why is his popularity so down? Probably because I killed him twice. That's right. Oh, you, you fought him before. Yeah. So why don't you, don't you want to fight him now? He's not popular enough. And why is that? Because I already beat him. Because I beat him so bad. That's right. Care if it's a fucking just whoop their ass, okay? You, do you want to fight or not? You know what? Take that uh, Asian kid. Yeah, I'm gonna take that Asian kid. Whoa, hey, hey. Racially insensitive. <laughs> that sounds racially insensitive. Yeah, and I don't care. I'm the band white champion. Suck it up. He just, he just goes all fucking okay boomer mode on you. What are you talking about? You are a boomer. Fucking. I mean, I don't know if that's right or not, because... Boomers are like 1950s, dude. Are all of our prelims filled? Yes. 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 I believe it's all right, we can... for all this nonsense, right? I mean, a couple mm -hmm. people can go still. Are you making prelims for the TV show? A couple. Uh, it's a TV show, man. I know, but we need to get people uh, fighting. Understand what I'm saying? Yeah. How about free prelim, free prelim fights for a TV show? Actually, you want to just have like a grand, like a mini one night tournament on the prelims? Hold on. Can we even do it on the prelims? We wouldn't have enough people in a division. Maybe lightweight. Yeah, we could do like a one night lightweight. One night. Then it gets on the main card. Yeah, winner of this uh, one night tournament gets, uh, uh, gets, the match, gets the match on the main card next time. Well, weight class. I guess lightweight. Yeah. Maybe. maybe.
Oh, we should have done that for the women's strawweight title. For the what? The women's strawweight title should have been that. Nah, we can't have a strawweight title crown on the prelims. I know, we could have made that a lesser show. Oh, well, whatever. Okay, um... I guess it's all going to be to be announced right now. Oh, okay. Uh, here's what I'm going to do. Uh, fuck you. Fuck you too. How about fuck all you? Yeah. Fuck all you. Hey, it does work. Okay. Now, who'd be some good matchups? That would be a good matchup. Who? Uh, second to the one. Second to the bottom. Uh, oh. Fuck you talking about? No, 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 no. It was that one. Right here. Mm -hmm. Fuck you. Oh my god, we gotta pay everybody. Inducements, my god. That's a good one. I like how this is, this is like the dumbest fucking name for a tournament, too. What the hell did I call it? <laughs> so Pre preliminary one night tournament final. Yeah. What's it really called? Oh well, whatever. Imagine, imagine through together, like, cause why the fuck not? Imagine it's like, so what are we fighting for in this one night tournament? Uh, if you win, you get a main card fight. Oh, so you're just giving me the opportunity to fight like, if I win? Yep. What if I'm technically speaking, I'm already fighting? Yeah, but it's gonna be on the main card. Man, fuck that shit. I see somebody complaining about that. And there you go. So there is our eight-man uh, tournament. And then we can have, like, three other fights. You know what's going to be a lightweight special right. on, the pre on the prelims? That Zamansky and the Gallagher would be a good fight. Yeah. Trying to get these guys involved. This Kakaru Fuma guy is actually pretty good. Yep. Um, he'd whoop everybody's but, ass. Yeah, but he's going to be fighting Dominic Cruz. Let's just hope he fucking wins. For the love of God, Fuma be. Bruce. I want that Asian kid. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on here, man? Be right back. Okay. And I think that is going to do it for this episode. You know, I'm edit that name. Volkov and Brown, too. These two have fought before. That's interesting. Alright, that's gonna do it.
Did you like this episode? Let me know. It was a little bit of a longer one. We showed you some booking we do. And we will see you next time on Bellator MMA. This is episode five. And we're on the road to 100. And we will see you then.